Uh, righto, let's dive into it. Atlases, whether it's from Quixel or from a, another source, atlases are 2D assets. The most common way people cut out atlases is they drop the atlas onto a plane and they use a knife tool to cut each element out and then isolate it away from the plane. And then from there, they need to deform each asset individually. And I find this technique quite boring and quite slow. So if you have access to SpeedTree, there is a better way. Jump across into Bridge. I'm going to use this little bushy one and this maple leaf for this tutorial. And I'm gonna show you how to cut them out and then deform them and then bring them back into Cinema 4D and shade them with Redshift. And I think this technique uh, is more efficient and it gives you more flexibility with the variations that you can create with each of the assets once they're cut out. When I'm using atlases in SpeedTree, I like to just put them in their own directory. So once they're downloaded from Bridge, right click, go to files, that will show you where on your computer it's downloaded to. You can just take from the directory there. So I've just made a folder with the two atlases that I'm going to use for this tutorial. It's the maple leaves and the plant. Okay, let's jump into SpeedTree. So we're going to start with the little plant atlas. Now SpeedTree is a chunky piece of software and I'm far from competent. So I'm just going to be showing you specifically how to cut out assets and then shape them and then we'll be exporting them back to cinema. So we'll start our plant with a one of the templates that SpeedTree comes with. So if you just file new, new template, come across to grass and just open the grass template. So if you take a look in the top left corner, you'll see these nodes, and this is where you create all the different parts of your trees and plants. First thing you wanna do is click on the tree tab and change the radius down here to 10. Cross to the stalk node up here, and you wanna change this where it says mode. Just make sure you got the gen tab selected when it ch changed mode to classic. Then you wanna change the frequency to 40. Come down to where it says boundaries, change first to 1.2, change last to 0.03. We just want to spread them right out. It might be hard for you to see at the moment. When we scale them up, you'll see it. Okay, we're just going to change one thing in the grass blade node for the moment. Make sure the geometry tab is selected, and then scroll down until you see the scale. Scale the width up to 2. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're going to start cutting out some of the meshes. So we're gonna come across to the right-hand side of the screen, which is the materials window. So first thing we need to do is put something into the color channel here. So just click on the area here, and then we need to navigate on the left-hand side over to those atlases that you have saved in your directory. So we're doing the plant one first. Now, because we're not doing any texturing in SpeedTree, we just need a reference here. So we're actually gonna use the opacity layer in the color channel. So just click on that, click open, so let's just label this material. So if you come up to this little plus minus sign here, that'll open the material browser and we can just, that's the material we've just created. So let's just rename that. Okay, now we can start making some meshes. So you'll see this small little window here. Okay, so just click edit on the mesh and you'll have the leaf cut out tool that'll come up. So what this is, is this has your atlas and you want to use these red dots to basically outline your asset. Drag them around. You can add more just by clicking on the line. Don't go into too much detail yet. I'll show you why in a moment. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Then you can mask out any of these areas because this is gonna create polygons that you don't need in these little areas here. So grab the mask tool. Just, and that's the way, just very carefully Moving like that, and that'll remove any areas you don't need. Next thing you need to do is um, add the spine into the cutout. So just by dragging this in, you want to put the little yellow dot at the base of the object, and then using this dial up here that says angle, you want to line it up loosely with the top of where you think the asset's gonna be. Once you've got that set up, that's gonna be your low poly version of the asset. You want to click this little arrow here, which is going to whack it in there. So while we're at it here, we're gonna create two other models very quickly at higher resolutions. So basically we can subdivide it on the fly here, which is awesome. It means you can have different quality models, different LODs basically uh, to export out a speed tree, depending on how much detail you require. And how we do that is simply by dragging the tessellation. And you'll see, I'm not sure how easy you're gonna be able to see that, but it's created uh, more vertexes in there. Once you've got a few more, Add it in there, it'll tell you the vertex and the face count there, so you can decide how detailed you want these. 
I normally do it about that and then I'd go to about there for a high poly version and there we go so that's 484 faces that's pretty cool so that is your first one cut out and once you've done that you want to just go through and do as many as you want so just come back to the materials tab here click there come back up into our little area here click add that'll set up a new one and then click edit and we're ready to do our next one If you ever forget which ones you've cut out, you can just click show all meshes and it'll show you which ones you've already cut out. So once you've cut out the meshes, you need to assign this material and these meshes to the grass. And to do that, we come across to the grass blade node and we come down to the material tab and under the frond window here, we change that to our plant material that we created. Now for the purposes of this, we don't need to change anything in the mesh. It's set to any, which means that we'll just pick any at random of the meshes, which is great for randomization. You can choose specific meshes if you want, but I just leave it on any. And you can see that that has added that material and that mesh to all of the grass, the separate pieces of grass, and it's fully randomized. So there's a whole shitload of settings that we can use to customize the shape of these meshes. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of them just to keep this tutorial short. Okay, let's start with the stalk tab. So we want to come down to the spine tab, and this is where we're going to adjust the heights of these bushes. So in the length, absolute, let's change that to two. So what it's actually doing is it's, if you remember back when we put 40 in here, so it's basically, it's got 40 blades of grass that we're using. And then for each of those 40, it's choosing one of these meshes uh, and randomizing that. What we can do also is in any of these settings, you'll see these little boxes next to a lot of these values. We can add even more variation. So we, we're setting two as the length, but we can change this, the variance to one which means that each time that the mesh is instanced, it will have a, a variance up to one. So a whole bunch of the settings have this variance option, which is a great way just to add a bunch of variations to the assets that we're creating. Okay, come down to the start angle. I'm gonna set this to 0.5, which is more or less straight up and down. And then there's a variance of 0.8. I'm just gonna leave that. Scroll down to noise. I'm actually just gonna set this to zero. There's all kinds of stuff you can do there, but I'm just gonna keep it simple for now. Okay, let's go to the grass blade node, come to the geometry tab, scroll down, and we're just going to play with these settings here, gravity, fold, curl, and roll. So you can play with these settings to your heart's desire, but to keep it quick, I know which ones I'm going to use here. Gravity will be 0.06, fold will be 0.4, curl will be 0.44, and roll will be 0.7. Cool, so that gives us a bunch of variations in these assets. So what we want to do is come up to file, When you get to these settings here by default this will be turned off but we don't actually need texture so you can just click skip texture save we're going to do all the texturing in cinema everything else you can leave as it is but one thing i should say if you do want to see what your assets are going to look like you can obviously come into the opacity tab on the material put the opacity layer in there and then come across to the color layer and put the albedo And then you get a better representation of what your assets are all going to look like. But like I said, we'll do all our texturing in Cinema. Okay, before we go into Cinema, let's set up our leaf cutouts. So file, new, blank document. Come up to the tree node, right click, add geometry to selected. And you want to come down to little branches. So we're going to give the leaves something to grow on. I'm sure there's a way to do this without needing branches, but I have not worked that out yet. Make sure the little branches node selected come across to the skin tab. Down in the radius you want to just change this percent of parent to zero come to the gen tab ignore the warning just come down to frequency change that to one change count to one okay come across to the spine tab change absolute to 20 percent of parent to zero start angle one okay let's add some leaves right click on little branches node add geometry batched leaves Okay, let's follow the same technique for adding the material and the meshes. Come across the material tab, you'll notice it's got a bit of a hangover from the previous project there. So what we want to do is set up a new material. So a little plus minus up here, add new. 
and that'll give you a fresh material. Come into the color tab, find your leaf, put in the opacity into the color tab. And then let's use the leaf cutout tool to add some meshes. So I've only cut out five, but you can cut out as many as you want. So come across to the batch leaves node, to the material tab, add your leaves material there. Okay, let's start making these look a little better because at the moment you can hardly see them. Well, there they are. Okay, come across to the gen tab, change the mode to interval, change the frequency to four and the count to five. Come down to the boundaries, let's leave zero as first, but let's make the last 1.3. For size scalar, let's go 1.5. Okay, come down to the sink and you can dial that right down. That just moves the leaves away from the branch. Okay, come across to the skin tab and let's play with a few of these deformations. Bold, 0.1, give a variation of 0.2. Curl, 0.3, variation of 0.2. Twist, 0.5, 0 0.2 variation. Okay, let's give these leaves some noise. So if you just come to the vertex tab here, let's go amount 0.3 and the noise, let's dial that to two. And what that's done is it's created a bunch of shape for these assets. And again, if you want to take a proper look at it, come to the color tab, put the albedo in there, come to the opacity tab, put the opacity map in there, and then you'll get a much better idea of what you're creating here. So there's a couple that just look like they're on top of each other a bit, which might make it tricky in a moment. So just come back to the gen tab and just dial that frequency down. So let's export these to FBX, file, export mesh, Remember to make sure skip texture saver is selected. So now we've got our two FBX files. Let's jump into Cinema. Okay, let's start by merging our plant FBX. You can pretty much leave all these settings as default. They'll come in tiny, so you might want to just scale them up. Okay, let's put the redshift texture on. So just make sure redshift is selected as your renderer. Then come into bridge and let's select our plant and we want to export the texture to cinema. Now, providing you've got bridge and cinema set up properly, you will get the ridge of material automatically all set up. Okay, so what you want to do is just come down to the materials here, grab your newly created one, hold down alt and drop it on top of the old material and that'll replace it straight out. Let's have a quick look at what that's doing in the redshift. There you go. There are your assets. However, they are still just one file. So I'm going to show you the quick way to split them all up. Okay, just for shits and giggles, put a redshift tag on that object now. It's easy to do it now. Okay, so what you want to do, switch to polygon mode. You want to choose rectangle selection or one of the selection tools, making sure that the plant is selected. Drag a box over a single leaf, hit U, hit P. And what that does is that splits that single leaf away from the rest. So now you've got an individual element. So you want to quickly go through, making sure that you always go back and select the main one, U, P. So it again, U, P. You can see what we've created here, a bunch of individual assets. I'm just going to hide the original for the moment. In fact, just delete it for now. Chunk these in a null. So one thing you will notice is that the axis for all of these individual items is incorrect, which can be problematic for when you're coming to do your scattering. So what you want to do is select all of them, come up to Mesh, Axis, Axis Center. Now for the point of this, we can just go negative 100 on the Y axis. Click Execute, and what that'll do is loosely put all your axes right on each individual object. Switch to a side view, and then just quickly go through. Activate the axis tool here. Just quickly go through and make sure that they all look roughly right. So you might just need to tweak them slightly. And this might feel time consuming, but this technique is still a lot more efficient than other ways. Okay, and there you go. A bunch of plant assets ready to be scattered. So the cool thing about this is we have created a bunch of plants that all have various heights and various deformations, and we've done it in a reasonably efficient way. 
Okay, let's move on to the leaves. Let's just hide this temporarily. Merge the leaf object. Scale it up. And you'll see that it's come in with its branch. So use the selection tag that will be included to select the leaves. Just double click on the selection tag, then come up to select invert and that will select just your polygons for the branch and you can delete it. Let's go across into bridge and grab the redshift material. Hold down alt, drop it onto the old material. Okay, we're gonna follow the same process we did with the plants. Oh, let's just make sure we disable the access tool there. So, make sure you're in polygon mode. Rectangle selection. Make sure your leaves object is selected. And where we go, UP. Okay, so you get the idea. Just delete that old one so you can see what we've done. And so there you go. Bunch of leaves, all individual items, ready to be scattered or cloned in a particle system, however you like to do those things. So what we can do as well, like with the plants, select all of them, come up to mesh, axis, axis center. That can just be zero for this one. And just execute that. And that'll just put your axes all in the right point. So if you do have access to speed tree, this is a great way to cut out and isolate and then transform and deform atlases um, and you can use this technique for leaves sticks plants all kinds of stuff and when you do go to scatter these assets uh, check out my other tutorial on adding some color variation to each of the instances i'll put the link in the description